You all know that Callie loves a lot of things. Callie loves music. Callie loves dancing. Callie loves talking, especially with you guys. But you might not know that Callie loves animals. I've been begging my parents to take me to the zoo for weeks. I'm sure they will soon. But to get ready for that trip to the zoo, we have a very special guest today. You might remember her. She has been here before. It's Stacy. Hey, Callie. Hey, everyone. I found out that she loves. Are you ready for this? Animals! That's true. I do love animals. I want to be a veterinarian when I grow up. Cool. Wait, what's that? It's like a doctor for animals. Oh my goodness. That's amazing! A doctor for animals? I bet you have to know a lot about animals to be a veterinarian. Yeah, you do. Awesome. Well, I know you want to talk to us about a very special animal today. Is it a lion? Roar! Is it a monkey? Ooh, 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 ooh. Is it an elephant? Roar! That's right, isn't it? It's an elephant. I knew you'd start with the coolest, biggest animal ever. Actually, I'm not going to talk about any of those animals. The animal I want to talk about today is... The salmon. The salmon? Like the fish my mom and dad serve for dinner on Salmon Sunday? That's them! Salmon are amazing animals! I've never seen a salmon at the zoo. What about a stingray? Or a shark? Salmon do something just as cool as any stingray or shark. When salmon are ready to lay eggs, they have to do it in a certain place their home, where they came from. They are so determined to get there that they swim upstream. Imagine that, the water's pushing against them, but they never give up. They even jump up waterfalls. That deserves a Cali triple butt take. What, what, what? Salmon jump up waterfalls? I didn't know they were such tough creatures. They really don't give up, do they? I need some time to rethink Sam and Sunday while we check out our Bible story for today. Today's story comes from the book of Daniel chapter one. Long ago, the people of Israel were taken away from their homes to a place called Babylon. The king of Babylon's name was Nebuchadnezzar. King Nebuchadnezzar wanted some of his prisoners to work for him in the palace, but he only wanted the very best. A young man named Daniel and his friends were chosen to serve the king. When you serve the king, you had the chance to eat a little bit of what the king ate, which was the very best food in the kingdom. The problem was that the food in the palace was not the kind of food God's people ate. Daniel and his friends wanted to obey God, even though they were in a far away land. So they had to make a really hard choice, not eating what the king gave them, could get Daniel and his friends in big trouble because no one around them really cared about God's rules. It would have been easy for Daniel to give up on obeying God and to simply eat what was given, but he didn't. Daniel refused to eat the food that he wasn't supposed to. He told the guards that he and his friends would only eat vegetables and water for 10 days. When they did, they were healthier and stronger than anyone else. Vegetables and waters are good for you, but they weren't the only reason Daniel and his friends stayed safe, healthy, and strong. It was because God was with them. Even though they were far away from home, they kept trusting God. They soon became King Nebuchadnezzar's favorite, even when things got hard. Daniel and his friend stood strong and said, I won't give up. God is with me. I bet when Daniel and his friends were in Babylon, they felt a lot like salmon swimming upstream trying to get home. I mean, they really had to be tough to keep on obeying God and not give up even when everyone else was following the rules of the king of Babylon. They did have to be tough, but just like salmon, 
Daniel and his friends didn't give up. I guess the salmon was a perfect creature to share with us today. You really know your stuff about animals. Now I have a surprise for you. What's that? Well, I was thinking, I bet those salmon look pretty funny swimming upstream, don't they? Flopping around everywhere and everything? Mmm, yeah, I guess it's kind of funny. <laughs> So I thought we could end our show today by doing the floppy salmon dance. Are you ready? Remember what we talked about today? Daniel and his friends didn't give up because they knew God was with him. Like them, we should never give up loving God and doing what God wants us to do. Sing it with me now. I won't give up. God is with me. Bye, friends. Hey there, little chicken nuggets. It's me, Coral. Welcome to Grow TV. Hosted by Carl, where we have fun with our friends, talk about Jesus, and go over everything the Bible has to offer. Now once again, welcome to Grow TV. What's up? How are y'all? I feel like it's been forever. Anyways, I'm so glad you're here, because guess what? I'm at one of my favorite places on the planet. Can you guess where I am? Nope, not the Cheesecake Factory. No, I'm not at the birthplace of the guy who created the two-story outhouse. Nope, I am here at the general the zoo. Now, I love the zoo. I don't know if it's the animals, the plants, the vegetation, or maybe just the outrageously priced food, but I just love it all so much. <laughs> No, 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 this can't be happening. Y'all have just been notified that my ticket to the zoo has been canceled. Apparently the card I used to pay was declined. They took my ticket away. I don't know how this is possible. I mean, this is my card. Why wouldn't they accept this? They're saying I can't pay for a ticket in food? What is this world coming to if you can't pay admission to a zoo with some McDonald's? And now what am I gonna do? I guess, I guess I'll just go home. Hey, Andrew? Hey, Carl! Whoa, what's wrong? I don't want to talk about it. Okay, wait, are you at the zoo? Yeah, but not for long. What? Why? Well, you know how I love the zoo, right? Of course. Well, yesterday I was sitting at home, I thought, hey, I, I, I need a me day. So I went online, I bought a ticket, or so I thought. What do you mean? Well, apparently they don't accept food gift cards as payment. You have to use real money. Makes no sense. No, oh, I'm so sorry. What are you going to do now? I don't know. Go home. Stare at the abyss. Eat five pounds of chicken nuggets and cry myself to sleep. Well, don't do that. Why not? Carl, you've never been one to give up. You're kind of like Daniel in that way. 
Daniel? Daniel who? Double dipping Daniel? The guy who always double dips his chips into salsa? No, Daniel from the Bible. Oh, okay, good, because I'm nothing like double dipping Daniel. I would never double dip chips like that. Yuck! Uh, okay, well, well, Daniel was a prophet in the Old Testament times, and he loved God very much. All right, he sounds cool. Well, his story starts off kind of rough. You see, Daniel and his friends lived in Jerusalem, but one day they were overtaken by the people from Babylon. The king of Babylon, King Nebuchadnezzar, took Daniel and the people of Jerusalem as captives back to Babylon. Wait, do the people of Jerusalem want to go with the Babylon Babylonian knights? Babylonian knights? The people of Babylon? Babylonies? The Babylon people. No, the Babylonians took them as their slaves. Babylon was much different than the place that they were used to. It definitely wasn't home. One of the biggest differences was the way that the Babylonians worshiped and who they worshiped. Oh no, that's terrible. It was, but the king had a plan for Daniel and his friends. You see, King Nebuchadnezzar asked one of his chiefs to find some men who would be fit to work at his palace. And that chief picked Daniel and three other men, Shadrach, Meshach, and Abednego. Oh, well, that's kind of nice. Did they get any special perks with their new job? Sort of. They were going to be given food from the king's table to eat. Whoa, they get to eat the king's food? That's great. I bet you he only eats the best of everything, like fancy mac and cheese with gold in it or something. Well, that's the thing. Daniel and the guys didn't want to eat the king's food. Are they out of their minds? Why would they turn down the finest meals you can find in the whole kingdom? And wouldn't that have been like an insult to the king to like reject his food? Yeah, for sure. But the four friends chose to not eat the king's food because they knew it would go against their commitment to God. So Daniel suggested to the chief that they only eat vegetables. But the chief was worried. Why? Well, he was worried that only eating vegetables would make them sick or weak, and the king wouldn't want that at all. But Daniel persuaded him to let them try it for 10 days. And guess what? Daniel ate so many carrots he became one. Nope, they actually, wait, what? That's one of my greatest fears, eating so many carrots to actually become a carrot. Okay, anywho, it worked. Verse 15 says, at the end of the 10 days, they looked healthier and better nourished than any of the young men who ate the royal food. Daniel and his three friends were healthier and stronger than any of the others who'd been eating from the king's table. And over time, the four men became the most respected men in the whole kingdom. And Daniel even had the gift of interpreting people's dreams and visions. Wait, what does that mean? Means that God gave Daniel the ability to understand what certain dreams meant. If you keep reading the book of Daniel, you'll see all the different ways that that gift came in handy. Sounds like it. Well, now I'm just trying to figure out why you compared me to Daniel, because I don't know nothing about interpreting dreams. Well, you see, Daniel was taken away from almost everything that he'd ever known. He was taken away from his hometown and put into a new land with new rules. But Daniel knew one very important thing. Never eat yellow snow? <laughs> no. But even though everything around him had changed and was new, Daniel understood that God was still the same. And even more than that, he knew that God was always going to be with him. Huh. I guess you're right. Well, that's tough. It would be hard to not just, I don't know, give up. It would be, but Daniel's faith gave him strength to carry on. And not only that, but stand up for what he knew was right. For example, he was in no position to be denying the king's food, but he knew that in order for him to still honor God, he couldn't eat it. And look how it turned out. Because Daniel chose not to give up, but carry on, he became one of the king's most trusted servants. I bet you this isn't the end of Daniel's story, is it? Not by a long shot, but we'll get to that later. Now, about the zoo. <laughs> I know, it was silly of me to think I, that I could use food as money. But I learned my lesson. I'm gonna go home, get some money, real money, and try again tomorrow. Andrew, you just sent me 20 bucks? <laughs> silly, I'll send it back. No, Carl, that's for you to get into the zoo. Wait, really? I, d I just, I... I just... Carl, it's, it's fine. I don't want you to give up today. And plus, there's nothing wrong with asking for help now and again. <laughs> That's the sweetest thing in the world. Thank you. I will never forget this. Seriously, I will never forget what you just did for me. No problem. Happy to do it. Be what? Uh, the money for the, the zoo that I just... Just kidding. Thanks, Andrew. Well, hello there, kids. Are you ready for today's big idea? Great, or as a tiger might say, great. Sorry, that was funnier in my head. Anyways, today's big idea is, I won't give up, God is with me. 
So on the count of three, I want us all to roar the big idea like a lion, okay? Are you ready? One, two, three. I won't give up. God is with me. Perfect. Very believable roars. I even got scared a bit. Now kids, it looks like Carl is enjoying his time at the zoo. So make sure to tune in next week so we can see what kind of animals he runs into. See you later. Thank you for watching and tune in next week for a new episode of 